On today's show, Nissan confirms that the new 2018 Leaf electric car is heading to New Zealand, Porsche doubles its investments in electric vehicles, and Elon Musk's own personal Tesla Roadster explores space with its driver, Starman. All of this and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host and fan of everything that gets us off suck, squeeze, bang, blow and onto clean, renewable transport of the future. Today, and I'm starting the show this week with some fabulous news, namely that Nissan has announced it intends to bring the new next generation Leaf to the Kiwi market. With a real world range of around 240 Ks per charge, the new Leaf is a lot less nerdy than its predecessor and has a far better range too. It also has some great semi-autonomous functionality in the form of the Pro Pilot Driver Assistance Package. I don't have any news yet on pricing or exactly when the LEAF will touch down in New Zealand, but it's fabulous news to see yet another affordable family EV prepare for its Kiwi debut. Porsche, one of many automakers who used to poo-poo the idea of electric vehicles, has announced this week that it will be doubling its global investment in electric cars and plug-in hybrids to a total of more than 6 billion euro. That's 10.2 billion Kiwi dollars by 2022. Much of that investment is earmarked to go on development of the Porsche Mission E, but Porsche is also saying that it's going to be using some of that newly committed funds to help it develop its own ultra-fast rapid charging network based on the next generation CCS quick charge technology, the same charging tech that will allow the Mission E to charge from empty to 80% full in just 15 minutes. Alongside publishing its quarterly and end-of-year results, Tesla has revised its Model 3 wait times this week and has managed to upset many Model 3 reservation holders in the process. You see, Tesla, while pushing Model 3 to some markets earlier than expected, has pushed back its production plans yet again for the dual motor Model 3, as well as production plans for the standard entry-level Model 3, the one with the $35,000 price tag. And while that means some customers will have to wait until late 2018 for their cars, it also means that some Model 3 customers are worrying that they're not going to be able to make use of the full federal tax credits for electric vehicles, since they think Tesla will have likely sold its 200000 thousandth electric car by that point, and thus the tax incentives will have either dramatically ramped down or ended altogether. They say that means that that pushes the Model 3 out of the affordability charts for many hopeful owners. As one commenter noted, it's like the Model X all over again. Despite this much slower than expected ramp up for Model 3, Tesla says it will be at 2,500 Model 3s per week by next month, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said during the Tesla earnings call this week that the company is on target to reveal the Model Y, its next mass market car, sometime in the next three to six months, with production launches for the Model Y planned for 2019 or 2020. As part of that, Musk seemed to suggest the Model Y will get its own new dedicated production facility, or at least be made at a new Tesla factory that isn't the Fremont one, where Model 3, Model S and Model X are currently made. As for paying for it, well, Musk said capital investments for Model Y will begin by the end of this year, a move which will further dilute the number of projects Tesla is working on at the same time. Talking of investments, BP made a $5 million investment in charging station company Freewire this week, further illustrating how importantly it views electric vehicles in its business plan moving forwards. What makes Freewire interesting, however, is that it's a company that produces the Mobi Portable Rapid Charging System, essentially a portable rapid charging station on wheels with an integrated battery pack. The Freewire charging stations can be wheeled to vehicles which need them wherever they are and can charge up to 10 electric vehicles per day. Also worth noting is the fact that because it's a battery pack on board, the Mobi charger can charge itself up from a washer or dryer outlet rather than needing the usual high power three phase outlet that's required for DC rapid charging stations. BP has already committed to trialing the Mobi units at various charging petrol stations in Europe, so keep your eyes peeled for them in the wild. 
Back in 2015, the world's first full-size all-electric ferry, known as the Ampere, went into operation in Norway, complete with two dockside charging stations designed to refuel the ferry's onboard battery packs in double-quick time during loading and unloading. At the time it was launched, it was expected that the ferry would make some significant savings in terms of energy and carbon dioxide emissions. But it turns out after three years that those savings are far higher than anybody first thought. It's no surprise then that the ferry company which owns the Ampere has already gone ahead and ordered another electric ferry. Electric propulsion, it's not just for cars. By now, I'm sure you're familiar with the Formula E race series, the I-PACE E Trophy, and the Electric GT, racing series dedicated to all-electric automotive racing. But have you heard about the FIM NL Moto E World Cup, a brand new FIM race series for electric motorbikes? Due to start next year, the race series has chosen Italian electric superbike company Energica as its manufacturer of choice. And this week, the company unveiled the Ego GP, an out-and-out race-ready electric motorcycle with a top speed of 155 miles per hour, that's 200 50 kph, the Ego GP is still in its final stages of race preparedness. But with just a year to go, expect to see a lot more of this motorcycle and the race series in the coming year. And finally, space is big really big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. But after SpaceX made its first successful launch of the Falcon Heavy rocket this week, there's now an electric car traveling through that vastness. Specifically, Elon Musk's own personal Tesla Roadster. Unless you've been under a rock all week, I'm guessing you already know about the very special electric car payload that sat atop the Falcon Heavy's upper stage as it broke orbital velocity, its stage-run rockets gracefully returning to the Kennedy Space Center for a choreographed landing and its stage two suffering a less than perfect landing in the Atlantic Ocean. Musk's Roadster, piloted by the mannequin affectionately known as Starman, was launched into space to prove that the Falcon Heavy could be used as a reliable heavy lift for future missions to Mars and beyond. And while the Roadster was intended to be launched on an elliptical orbit of Mars, it turns out that that third burn designed to send it there was a little strong, hurling Starman and the Tesla off towards the asteroid belt instead. Safe travels to both, and here's to many, many more SpaceX launches. And on that note, it's time for me to bring another episode to a close. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness, so make sure you hit that notification bell below to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, have a fantastic weekend. Make sure you do something fun, and don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.